Oh, hello everyone. Well, we've got one in the workshop. Jet! Ooh, ooh, ooh. That's what it is. It's a Jet Guitars JS400. And uh, I nearly bought sort of one of these, not the 400, but slightly cheaper one. But I nearly bought one a few weeks ago, just, you know, when I was bored moments and I was thinking, I've heard so much about these and everybody raves about them and I want to see one and see if it's any good and and I figured that to be honest I could probably um, sell it for well I could sell it again even if I didn't want to keep it and make my money back <coughs> um, so you know but anyway as it happened Trevor put me out of my misery by buying one and sending it directly through oh look at that there's a little bit of blemish there hold on very small tiny I mean it really is small but small blemish from the factory anyway so well as you can see we've got a pretty metallic candy apple -y, um blue looking beast now just one thing hold on <clears throat> as we're starting out looking at this here thing I just want to get myself a, a post-it note because Something about this joint here looks like there's a gap, but actually there isn't. It's just the way they've just the way they've made it. That's fine. Okay, I was just curious. So <clears throat> we've got some Jet branded tuners here, which we're going to replace with some <coughs> uh, a set of sorry, a new set of um, uh, locking tuners with the same type of buttons on them. We've got the roasted maple neck. Um, We've got a rounded off heel with a sort of pretty much a following curve on the heel. Sorry, the rounding off, rounded off pocket with a following curve on the heel, which is always nice. That's how I like to do things. Then we've got this kind of rear cutaway, which is a bit odd <coughs> um, because I don't really know how we ever get our hands in there. Uh, but that's okay. We've got a really nice finish, candy apple blue, as I've mentioned. You know, very nice quality. Uh, metallic finish there we've got a socket on the side and um, there's something I don't know if you, you may be able to see it but there's something about the line here which is absolutely precise there's a <clears throat> there's almost a an edge here where you step up onto this this surface so it's, it's very precise um, it's not rolled over it. it comes to almost like a lip not a lip it's not the right word it's a very precise transition, um, a bit odd for for my liking, but that's okay. <coughs> then we've got the thing you'd kind of expect. We've got the Strat style thing, an HSS, lovely cream pick guard or parchment, you might call it, cream single coils, an open face black coil, um, volume and tone further away than a Strat, five-way switch, decent looking two-point floating tremolo um, obviously no jack there but it doesn't suffer from it I mean that still looks like a great guitar um, then we come down to the maple roasted maple neck which everybody raves about and it is a good looking thing you know you, you start from a good place when you have a roasted maple um, they just look nicer you're starting off with something that doesn't need as much finishing um, it's a bit sort of uh, you know the uh, jet is a little bit I don't know what we call that it's a tr it's a transfer and it's um, a little bit metallic and reflective but it's it's quite nice um, what looks like a bone nut on there which we'll replace with an adjustable tusk one strings have got a bit of corrosion on them for brand new which isn't ideal see that a little bit of rustiness going on there um, but yeah like I say the the neck you you can't sort of go wrong with a rusted maple neck it has that sort of lovely color from the get-go um, so you get the benefit of a what feels mostly like relatively unfinished I mean, a little bit of satin nitro or nitro satin poly on there but mostly it feels kind of raw um, but it has a nice look to it so it doesn't have that sort of horrible bright maple whiteness this one's come with a bit of float in the uh, thingy already which we'll take out for, to begin with because it's not set to any particular level so we'll take it out for the setup purposes and then dial it back in afterwards so what we're going to do here is we're going to 
we're going to do a setup. We're going to fit a tusk adjustable nut. We're going to replace these tuners. We're going to replace the string trees, and we're going to set the tremolo floating um, and have it all hunky dory and lovely. Um, one of the things I did note, and a lot of people sort of rave about how good the frets are on these things, and I have to say I'm not entirely convinced they're any much more better or worse than anything else, which is okay. I mean, it's it's not a it's not really a downside or not a downer to, you know, to have. I'm not so so, but you know, you know the the frets are cleanly done. But there is one thing about these that I I think you might agree with me is. Well, it may contribute to them being a little bit less than acceptable. If I hold this here, maybe it's not so easy to see. I'm trying to get... A... Right, there, you may see, these are beveled and left unrounded. So if I kind of look everywhere along, you'll see, you'll see them flattened off at the end and then nothing else is done to them, no softening or rounding off. So I'm at the extent of my zoom at the moment. Let's get a better look down here. Yeah, so literally a straight line, and what it means is if I get a sorry, if I get a pointing thing, let me take a close look at one. Okay, so um, hello, where are we? Oh yeah. So if we see this edge here, round round the the sort of edge, the chopped off edge there, that's normally rounded off, and because they're not on this, um, sorry. My, Fingernails. I filed them, but look how ragged they look, even when you file them. Terrible, isn't it? Um, yeah, so there. Um, that isn't rounded off right at the edge there, and it makes them feel pronounced. Um, they're not bad, but they are a little bit uncomfortable. They feel sharp, because technically they are sharp. So, so with a, a normal fret, you've got a number of things that some customers, some companies do. So there's your your edge of your fingerboard and some some companies um, you know they'll they'll put the fret on and then they'll chop it off at an angle and lo and behold it sort of sits there like that that's my diagram of what we just looked at wow Dunk. Um, and that we might even sort of redraw that we might say that's stepped back a little bit like so so a bit off the vertical the vertical would be kind of like that you get what I'm saying um, so it's beveled back a bit, but what they've done is they've left this these edges here incredibly sharp. They've not done any softening or rolling of those edges. And as a result, they feel quite distinct. There are um, it's not jet, but sire, for example, does another kind of fret end, which is kind of odd in a way. It's the semi-hemispherical fret end, and it's kind of hard to even draw that really. Um, kind of looks like this if if the top of your fret sort of came down here like this it sort of goes over in a sort of smooth blobby thing and you know you could draw a little reflective window on it like in cartoons and it kind of has a shiny bit there so it's it's rounded in this plane as well as this plane if you see what I mean um, now those feel odd too because they they not only come to the edge, but they're much more feelable than a laid-back bevel. Um, anyway, so what we're going to do is we're going to basically hand-file them all a little bit with a rounding-off file um, and take care of that. But it it's difficult for Trevor's perspective. I've shown him them, and I can tell how odd they feel because they are actually quite sharp. So we'll need to round them off, and we'll round them off with a file, and then we'll soften them up, if you like, blend them into everything when it comes to uh, polishing after the fret leveling. So that's the sort of components. I mean, you've got, I mean, my initial thing is having played this bit at home, I really love the sound of the pickups on this. Now we've got a terrible, let me just do something a minute. We've got an out of tune scenario going on here. So I'm going to just, while we're about things, I'm just going to take off the back plate and um, tighten up the screws on the trim claw so we pull the plate down. So we're starting with a hard tail before we do anything else. Um, this is a slightly different from the usual six screw setup because the, 
we're going to pull it down flat, um, but in its horizontal position, there's a bit of movement in it. So um, if we want to block it off or flatten it completely, we have to pull the, pull the thing down to touch at the back and leave it there for the time being. Um, and then we'll rise it, raise it up a little bit later on for the float. So nice big solid, or a nice big cast block, but it's bigger than the usual thingy. Um, three screws, familiar type of stuff. Um, interesting drilled holes here. Uh, why would that be done? Why would that be advantageous? Um, I don't rightly know. I can't see any reason for doing that. Anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, puzzle, a puzzle. Let's put that there, let's put that there. What am I going to do? Oh yes, I'm going to turn this over. Um, and then I'm going, no, I'm, not. I'm going to start from this side. And I'm going to get the this screwdriver and tighten this down. So we want basically most of the way in to begin with. Adjusting your tremolo and the, uh, by using the claw is really, it's something I learned late in life. Um, before this I would never have known. I would have thought you just, there was just some sort of average position this thing sat at and that was all you, that's all that mattered. Okay, so now we're we're in, we're flat at the back here and we're going to treat this as um, a flat uh, thingy. <laughs> what am I looking for? Oh, I'm looking for a couple of things and a tuning thing. Sorry, I lost my words for a minute there. Okay, so that's, let's put that down flat. Um, let's have a quick listen. I'm never, I've, I'm, I'm not a good player, so I don't ever get into a good, a good mood or thingy to play something for you. And it's funny, isn't it, how it comes from the, the days of childhood when you, you feel ashamed that your playing isn't as good as somebody else you saw um, and not helped by how unkind the internet can be um, you know when people come along and the first thing they like to do is tell you you're rubbish um, woo. Whoa. Oh dear. Oh. Okay, we're going to have to change that. I think we've got a problem with the jack, jack socket. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh, oh dear, oh dear. Good start. play that at all that way it's gonna have to change it straight away so look not a great thing so out of the box a slight problem there um, and if you were a, a kiddo that would put a, a bit of a damp damper on your 
activities because the first thing you well you wouldn't know what to do particularly so I'm going to remove this and have a quick look but I think I'll just change it for a, a better quality jack um, because it's just it's not good enough to have a faulty jack to begin with um, believe it or not jacks fail oh hellfire I've got my other phone there inter probably interfering with the play I don't know what's up with that but it's cheap as chips okay let's um let's get that out of the way let's get this out of the way uh, 63 percent go over there right let's turn on this let's find a jack socket Yeah, I don't know what's exactly wrong with it, but there's no point living with a, a cheap thing that's not working. You know, you could, you could, it's one of the things you could mess about trying to, uh, trying to work out what it is that doesn't work about it, and you could be there forever. So it's just, it's not worth it. Put a quality one on, because it's very often this can be literally broken. Heart can be broken. Heard that the other day. It's funny to think that somebody who's singing so kind of powerfully on that record was actually no longer with us. Gone. She became a grandmother in the period of time between making that record. She was not young when she made it, but became a, a grandmama or age wise and and then passed on. Um she's kind of strange you know if you remember her if, like me you re remember her in the sort of MTV heyday of the 60s no not the 60s the 80s um let's put this here so you can see not a very brilliant view but you at least get a see of what I'm doing so I'm going to just remove these yeah I, I it's amazing how you'd think there was precious little that could be actually wrong with uh, this thing here, a jack socket. But sometimes they just, they just, the connection just doesn't work. So it's a, it's a cheapie. So we might as well get shot of it and replace with a decent E. So, just hang fire. Now, what I'm going to do is, as I always do, is I'm going to uh, going to put on a tiny bit of a little bit of thread lock, low strength thread lock. I have to tell ye, not very sticky. I tell thee, um, just it helps to keep it from coming undone. As simple as that, but not so tight that it will um, prevent you or a guitar tech removing it in future should you need to do it can we get this one on do we need that extra one at the bottom there possibly not no let's just take that off a minute it actually doesn't go any further so we shall Take this one with the stuff now on the thread and we'll put this over the top. No, we'll do it the right way around, eh? How about that, Samuel? <laughs> and then we'll put the one that's had the stuff on it on it. And we will put it into well, we don't know what is the best way in this hole. It should be any direction should work, but sometimes there are better directions than others, funnily enough. Right, when I think I've got it where I want it, I'm going to hold it by hand and I'm going to manually tighten it and give it some welly enough to hold it in place. Okay, so we've got a Nutric quality or a Nutric jack here, um, which we now can do back up. So we have the black and the yellow, and we of course have to believe that the yellow is indeed 
the live one. Um, let's be let's be proper about it. Let's put a little bit of uh, that stuff. Oh, you know what I mean. The stuff that does the stuff. Yes. Shrink tubing is what I mean. I'm just going to put a bit of shrink tubing over the bits. So it's a, it's a very funny, different world we've woken up into. It's politics time. No, well, we have, haven't we? We've come come into a, woken up into a, arrived at a different place. We are now living under Labour government. Um, I think one of the things that I noticed about this election was the the way. I guess, like you know, when, whenever you watch the American system, you you can always. You know, I'm British people are always amazed at how the American system works um, because it's so different from ours, and um, and uh, no doubt they look across and think what. Well, Hell is going on in that country when they look at ours. Um, so the, each country has a peculiar thing, but we have this first past the post thing, which um, its effect is you can have, in a sense, you can have a government winning the election with numerically fewer votes. <laughs> that sounds ridiculous, doesn't it? You can win the election with less votes. <coughs> as a percentage of the whole country's voting preference, uh, with less votes than another party, uh, and that that I, th I think there's a sort of slight and and it's an analog or has an equivalent in the I think it's the college is it the college or oh, the American college thing what do they call it No, not college. Um, you know the thing I'm talking about. Oh God, I forgot my name of it. I've forgotten the word. What is the word I'm looking for? There's an American system where you can get the, you get the public vote and you get the other one. Oh, I can't remember now. Camp, not campus. Oh, Hellfire. You know what I'm talk, trying to talk about. Anyway, um, so yeah, you can you can you can win the election here in Britain with total fewer individual human beings voting for your party than another party who doesn't win. Which, of course, just looks mad. Because, you know, people, you could say, well, that's just a, you know, it's, it, the system works, and why are you worrying? Because it's only a, it's only a nicety we're talking about. And uh, it's not just a nicety. What we're really talking about is the fact that, you know, you end up with, let's say, could be, it's not un impossible, that you end up with a government in place that only 30 percent or 20 percent 25 percent even of the votes cast voted for that uh, that party and um, that just seems crazily unsatisfactory come along now Yeah, definitely seems like an unsatisfactory state of affairs. Um, oh, hellfire. I'm annoyed that I've forgotten the name of that American system. The, the, uh, I'll remember it later on. Anyway, so the point being is that um, it was a surprisingly small... Uh, there were some, some oddities about the numbers of people. So that's the wrong way around. It's funny how it sits in, isn't it? That's not lined up with that, so we have to push that. So sometimes putting a better quality jack in has a, a real difficulty reaching your screw holes, as in this case, but we should be all right. Um, anyway, yeah, so we've got a Labour government, and uh, it, uh, the, the we also have this thing, the first pass, the post system, means that um, 
some a, a party like, for example, the Reform Party, got oh god, I can't remember the numbers now. Anyway, got a you know a big chunk of or a fair chunk of votes because it's a new part, newish party, new party, um, and and only got one seat in the House of Commons, whereas less votes got more seats for other parties uh, in the Commons. So it seems quite unfair in that respect. Um, or it's, it's an oddity of the British system, which uh, I don't like. I mean, I think it should be... Well, it just seems to me that the, the only way you can really surely do politics, really, is to have a proportional representation thing so that, you know, you have to be a majority of all the votes cast for a party to get in. Sounds sensible to me. Anyway, so having messed about now with uh, replacing the jack, now someone is in going to have a go. And you see, it doesn't want to. Oh, I hate this. So these things are built only to run with low quality jacks, cheap jacks. So a quality one hasn't got enough room now to fit in there. How about that? That's really annoying. So we now have to try and figure out if there's any one way better than any other way. So this is a little thing that can be a real pain in the backside when you just think you're going to upgrade something because, well, first of all, the, the original doesn't work. Then you have this thing that says, now, we've actually not made a wide enough... Um, we've not made the thing wide enough, so you can't actually push a, this quality jack in and have it open up and work. So we have to try and find out which way round this is going to work. <laughs> See, I can't pull it out now, unless it's... Right, so I can't use the original holes. Can you believe this? For this to work, I can't use the original screw holes. It's not going to work, because they pushed it over into a certain angle on here, and that only worked with the smaller, flimsier jack. Let's just try and see if it will do anything in this direction. Nope. Bloody hell. Talk about annoying. Right, this way round, and this way round, it won't line up. So I'm going to have to make new holes in here. The other ones are covered, that's is okay. So, but we're not going to get this to go on. So, hold fire as I mark up where they're going to go. Right, so they're just about two and a half mils to the side. But we're going to have to do it because that's the best it's going to be. See those little extra holes there? That's the amount across that we have to go <coughs> to make this work. So what you thought was a quick job with the soldering iron now becomes uh, a job with a drill. Um, what kind of screw are we doing? We're doing that. We need this, probably. <coughs> And maybe a little tiny one here to make the first mark. Or the first in. Right, you there, you there. And I'm going to go exactly where my marks are because I had the thing right there. Now the difficulty here is to make a little dent without cracking the finish because it doesn't really want to poke through it wants to crack more than anything else so then we get that fine drill bit and we hold this up there and we place it in the little dent 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 we've made and we do the same over here and then we widen that very slightly just to not to put too much um Strain on the screws. <laughs> okay. So that's, as I say, that's one of the first things you get when you change, when you find when you change, change over your, um, what do you call it, that thing. Now this one doesn't want to go up this way at all now, does it? So it's not that way up, it's got to be this way up. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so before I do any doing up of the screws. 
I should like to put in the jack, but it's down on the floor. So I'm going to trust for a minute my screwings ups. Now, I'm just going to mark this for the right hand side. Mark on the right hand side so I know which side it's going. I'm just going to do a tiny little um, countersink on this because the screw is a little bit, um, I don't know what the word is, the screw is a little bit wider. And what I don't want to do is crack the finish. So I'm just going to give it a little bit of help. Hopefully, that will improve things. Yeah, so we're, we're, we're in our British politics system, political system, has now returned a conservative, no, no, Labour government after 14 years of um, Tory governance. Um, it is a long time, but uh, my problem with all of this is that everyone, we, we go through this cycle every time, and you sort of see this when you get past 30, 40 more years or whatever, you, sort of, you kind of, you see that the, the thing is very cyclical, and whether it's five years or f 15, or 14 in this case, you know, um, it, it's definitely a feeling of being in a cycle that, you know, there was a period, if you remember, in the 1990s and into the 2000s where uh, Labour were in power and they were great and it was all wonderful. Um, well, it was great when they got in. Oh, this thing just doesn't want to do it. Well, it does, but it's bloody stiff. It was better than not doing it at all. I think we're going to have to live with that because I'm not going to drill out the whole tube. Let's make sure it just plays okay. Anyway, yeah, so we, you know, Labour were in for a chunk and then by the time Labour had been in for a chunk, it came to an end and they were the demons and out they were, it went and then came the, you know, the Tories and it was like, oh my God, Labour's going to be in the doghouse and in uh, in, what do they call it, opposition for ever and ever. And, um, yeah, so, so, you know, this thing doesn't. That shouldn't even be live. Yeah, so they were they were the heroes for five minutes, and then they were the demons. Yeah, and get them out, get the Tories in. You know, and the Tories came in and. You know, they, um, Labour had been disgraced and trust was gone and the Tories came in, sorted all out. And then 14 years later, the Tories are the monsters, get them all out and so on and so on. And in comes Labour all grinning and everybody's going to, it's all going to be just fine and they're going to fix all the problems. Um, And it never happens. They'll be out in 10 years, five years, and 
Yeah. There'll be the monsters, and then will come the saviors, and then the saviors will get chucked out, and turn, they'll get turned into the monsters over time, and so on and so forth. Anyway. So here we have the fairly clean sound. So we've got quite a loud boost at the humbucker department. We don't have any switching here. It's a single coil. Nice fluty uh, neck pickup sound. Put it out of tune. What's that? <laughs> that one. We can get the bend out of it, but it's um a bit high at this end just yet, and it's all out of tune. As soon as you bend notes like that. not bad in terms of um, playing the notes. So I don't know what the grounding is in here. It's not too bad actually as I thought, but forget that it's out of tune. Yeah, it's not too bad. Probably true is that the jack is touching the walls of the socket, uh, the walls of the tunnel in there, which is not my ideal state of affairs. But short of drilling a wider tunnel, it's the way it goes. And I just, I, it's such a shame that they do that. That for the for the <coughs> for the sake of a different bit in their manufacturing, they limit you or put a, give you a problem. Um, with a this sized uh, tunnel, so um, what I'll do is I'll have a look. Um, trying to think, there's no there's no real way we can change this over. Um, it's got to it's got to work, um, and we don't want to be constrained to crappy little toy. I mean that works. <coughs> well, I don't know is whether it is actually touching anything in there, like the side. It, sh it shouldn't be um, shouldn't be a problem, as in it shouldn't be creating a gr any grounding problems because um, it's not trans it's not a conductor. Um, 
So it may just be that's the sound of this guitar with uh, the gain turned high, which it was. It's being single coils, but it was doing it a bit on the humbucking side of it as well. Um, get over to there because it won't go in at all. <coughs> so we go to there. <coughs> See that? Works fine there. What you can do is bend the lugs of this thing in just a little bit to uh, give it a chance to clear anything. Sometimes i found in the past, that although it shouldn't be the case, I've noticed, or it seems, that the paint on the inside of the, the what's-its can be um, conductive, slightly conductive, the uh, metallic paint and the clear coat or whatever. It just, it seems like that creates a, a short out or creates problems, although there's no way, absolutely, no way it should be. So, that way, that way. It likes to be that way. It wants to be towards that side. This is why it should work. <laughs> right. Okay. Well, now we'll have to leave that as is. It's working fine. Right, um, so the next thing is we're going to, I suppose we need to get ready to take care of the nut. So we've got a, a this is a nine and a half inch radius guitar, um, nicely fitted bone nut by the looks of it, but not, not messed up by any lacquer getting in the way or anything like that. So we should be able to just tap this out neatly and then we'll go into making a, a bone, sorry, a, bone, a tusk. Uh, adjustable. Uh, Trevor had uh, bought a guitar of me. <coughs> wow, quite a long time ago now. He bought a, an Ash, custom-made Ash Strat um, with a nice cherry, not cherry burst, honey burst finish colour on it, um, and that had an adjustable nut. So he um, specified an adjustable nut on this one too, please. Um, so I think I've just about got enough. Uh, hex keys and um, the tiny little hex keys I have to dig around, but I'm low on grub screws and the hex keys, so it's not the end of the world, right? So now I've got me a, a string spreader finally, which is a wonderful addition to my arsenal. Um, We'll get a couple of tapping things for tapping. Uh, yeah, so anyway, that's it. Yeah, that, Labour government, new era. It's the dawning of a new era. Somebody sang once. It is the dawning of a new era. Um, anyway, so we shall see what happens. Of course, I'm. I'm. <laughs> I've got the hammer between you, the camera, and the uh, guitar. So I have to be careful because I haven't got much swing room. Out you come. I thank you. Yes. <coughs> so a new era. It's very. I. I found the whole thing of. Um, I don't tell. This is wider than it. Replacement. Oh, God, Lord, is. I've just gone to tap this out, and I bet these are non standard. Oh, holy moly. I bet they're not. I bet they're narrower. I bet the whole thing's completely wrong. Oh, God. Why did I do this? My, my, you know, spacing's good. It's just, yeah, spacing's all right. It's, it's the overall length is quite a bit different. But, worst comes to worst, 
shebang. They've made it wider. Oh, Jet. So you've, you've annoyed me, Jet, on the jack socket and upgradability. You've annoyed me on this replaceability. I can't use that like that. That's, that's screwed that up. Uh, have I got any alternatives? Well, I've got a black. No, I haven't even really got a black spare. I've got a 7.25 inch radius, but that'll be the same width. I have got, just right off hand, I've got nothing. We can make this bone one into a into a, an adjustable one, but that sort of defeats the object a bit. Uh, well here we have an actual fender one, but even that's too loose. You see, they've bloody swines they've made this really impossible so what I've done in the past in this situation is that I've widened up sorry terrible view I've actually widened up thickened up this on the front edge um, because the last thing you want is it leaning over that's a terrible thing but to have started out from a size that you can't actually bleed and well use uh, is just somewhat annoying um, so sometimes, as I say, I, I can boost it up with a bit of extra. Uh, that's, a, that's a lefty. That's a lefty. There's no point using that. I've got loads of little sp of spare bits of stuff that I can use, but um, no, no, no. I've got that one as a complete spare. I've got that one as a brand new nut all together. I've got a little. So this one do. Oh. I've got loads of bone nuts that will do. Damn them to hell and back. So that 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 puts a bit of a kibosh on it because, to put it simply, Tusk does not make a thicker nut than that because it's using fender as its mm, reference point, um, and as a result, it doesn't expect wider nut and there are some guitars this one as you can see for starters but there are other some other guitars like uh, some of the J JHS ones really don't um, they just don't work well so we have an option here to do a bone one um, or we can we can boost this one as I say it, I mean I've got I've got probably got quite a bit of Sometimes it's easier to boost it with a piece of new bone, which I should have. I've got some kicking around in here, so I take that new bone off, off uh, quite a lot of um, tailors. So the new bone's close, well it's similar to tusk, but the problem is if you do it if you do it this way with a with a widening thing, you either put it at the back, um, that's probably the best way to do it, is to fit it to the back. So you have to you have to basically glue on your piggyback thing. Um, I've got a, I've got a, maybe there's a very thin piece here that will do the job. I keep every little bit of loose scrap tusk because it only ever needs something as thin as this little whisper of it here. Um, it might actually just be the right thing on the back end. On the back end. Um, yeah, you've got to get the position right and then you've got to tailor it. But actually, that could probably just do it. I mean, it, it seems a shame to... Uh, I don't want to kind of leave it being bone, which is what we didn't want to do it in. We were choosing to do it in something other than that. Well, we've got the length on there. That would work. Um, it's a bit thicker at one end than the other. Okay, let's see if we can attach this in a useful way. Hard to handle, um, annoying uh, glue. And I don't, like I say, I don't have any, I've got, I've got some, I don't know, I don't want to make one, I could make one from scratch with a, with a, I've got some lefty nuts that I'm probably not going to use. For a long time, so the lefty 7.25 that's fair enough, lefty 9.5, and I've got a lefty something that I'm not even sure I would even use, but that could possibly just become a donor for this whole thing and it would be a single piece. Oh, whoa, what do I know? Whoa, probably 
let me keep a work a usable piece of tusk nut here along with its possible little shimmy bit here why don't I keep that and why don't I just bite the bullet and make one from scratch um, that I know will be a single piece um, and of course, of course I providing it's wide enough to begin with I can I can use this lefty which I'm probably not going to use for a while so first of all it has to be wide enough which it is the string spacing is no use to me but uh, I can modify that um, we've got a, we've got a right hand one here which is again not doing any service at the moment um, we just need to compare the spacings uh, actually that's <laughs> that one's on the mark straight away well this one could do me this one here could could dem could donate not only the slots but could donate thickness to be enough to reuse as scrap uh, somewhere else so it'll be a, a thin bit off the back which will give me an extra piece of scrap for other future repairs why don't I look at that let's put this one out of the way sorry this is immediately turned out to be more complicated than was expected it's always the way um, let's take this quietly to the thing and cut off what are we going to cut off? We're going to cut off the back section. Um, we know the thickness because I've got it here. But let's just double check. The thickness of this is going to be 350 we need. So if I go 350, and we're going to use the front section. Uh -huh. so I'm going to make a mark on here. I can roughly see what I'm doing. Um, let's run it along here too. Oh, damn it. 350. 350. 350. Right. Uh, it's just one of those things. It, it would be so much easier not to do that, but we have to work with what we've got. Um, so I see my 350 line on there. Can I make it stand out with some finger grime? Yep, it's a very, very close cut. So it's a flat bottom slot. That's fine. And the spacing's good. All right, let me make a bit of a noise over here. I should probably leave the microphone pieces right, put this back on my ear so yeah like I say we've got the um, we've got the left-handed put lefties over there uh, yeah we've got the we've got the spare bit and we've got the right width so what I'm gonna do now is just move these various things slightly out of the way 
Give me room to tuck the guitar over there, safely out of the way. This little piece here is going to go off and do duty as a future spare. Stick to the board, always handy. And I'm going to bring up the sanding. What's it? So now we can, we're going to get down to, we're going to take it down to our target of uh, three. Sorry, two, what was it? Two point. Five. Ow. On off, clear, zero. Right. And it's actually three point four. But that's where we're aiming for. Three point four. And we need to get it nicely nicely flattened out first. We don't have a ton of material to play with. So I set this on 3.4. Well, let's, let's go to 3.5, just be on the safe side. Okay, so it's fractionally more. It's almost on the mark. So we've got to be very precise about getting this down to size all the way across. So I uh, I voted, um, the missus voted, and we felt like we'd done the right thing, you know. Um, although I won't lie, and uh, I and you know I know that sometimes this opens up less discussions, more more slaggins offs, but um, I. I would say that I don't find that any of the I don't have a lot of faith that any of the parties can do what they uh, offer. So there's a lot of offering going on um, and a lot of people talking as if they can solve everything um, and I don't really have any confidence of any of them particularly uh, being able to sort things out. That's nearly the right thickness. <laughs> so 3.5, not just over, that's just under. So a bit fatter at this end here. Right. Um, yeah, not really confident so, and then I, you know, I tried to, so I think, I don't know, I think some people start out by thinking, okay, which party do I have a natural affinity for any party? And my instinct, instant reaction is no, um, particularly. Um, and then the next thing becomes, uh, is there one more than any other that makes me think they can, or that one more than others that feels like a, it speaks to me? And the answer is always no. And the reason I come to is because I... I'm cursed, it seems, by having views that one thing could be, you know, could say, oh, that's a conservative take or the, uh, whatever it's called, reform. Yeah, that's, that's what reform says is the most important thing. Um, but then I, I said, well, okay, I might agree with them on that or the conservatives on the other. Um, but the problem is, is I, I don't, oh, I don't then follow in any way the rest of the position of the that party so there's no I can't quite understand this world where it appears that if you you're supposed to to find a political home it's as if you're supposed to if you think one thing about one subject it'll work out that you kind of you feel this you feel another thing about the rest of the things, if you get what I mean. Um, and there's, no, there's not a single party that I identify with in that way. You know, that I would go, oh, that's the, that's the you know, I agree with the Tories on everything, or I agree with Labour on everything. I absolutely don't. So there's no single party, which is always, for me, 
Oh, look at that. Rock and roll. Um, right, let me just think out loud. So now we've got a, a height issue. Um, yeah, so there's no party that does that for me. And then I sort of try and think to myself, well, how are you then supposed to vote? You know, if you don't have a party that covers everything, you know, I, I just couldn't see myself as a, I'm a Labour Party person or I'm a Tory when it comes to this or, or I'm a Tory through and through. And whatever the Tories say on, you know, the future of business, uh, I'm totally behind what the Tories say or what Labour says or what whoever else says. And it just doesn't work like that for me. It's bizarre. So I don't have a, a natural home in that respect. Um, and so what I'd really like to happen, if I'm honest, is I would like all, I would like to see, I'd like to see a load of politicians from all parties working together to um, solve our problems. And then I'm sort of, kind of led to believe there's something strangely naive about that. You know, why, why can't we have a mix of, first of all, all parties? Why, why can't we get that nice cross-section of all parties? Uh, but apparently, you can't. You have to have one or the other. You're, you're, you're doomed. Now, what I'm going to do, by the way, is I'm going to just cut this piece off as well, um, leaving my microphone over here, and cut this piece off, and we'll get ourselves another spare little piece. Spare little piece, he said, shouting. That's got away with it, maybe. Let's move you out of the way again. Sorry about that. So now I've got a ragged piece of nut, which I don't have a right holder to put nuts through there. That's lesson number one, if I would care to listen to it, but I didn't. Anyway. So yeah, we weirdness of politics and all that garbage. Um, yeah, I don't get it. I don't get why, how there's supposed to be one single thing that... Uh, somehow it seems to me that we're supposed to be able to align ourselves with a single party and somehow that that just party somehow maps everything everything it says is its agenda we're supposed to we're supposed to find a, an allegiance with and of course I, I just don't it's as simple as that it's too complex all these different things so 
uh, I'm definitely don't have any allegiance. So I'd, I would, I'm tired of watching people fighting and arguing and stuff. So I'm, I'm absolutely keen that there is a collaborative, cooperative politics. Um, and I just think with time of, you know, the adversarial politics has got, got to come to an end. Uh, you know, because it, it, it sets peop, people up for a start with an expectation that, you know, you win this contest and then you get to have your say and that's it. You get to tell everybody else that's the way it's going to be. Um, which I just think is a, is a lousy little way forward. It's just useless. Now, I'm going to put a little bit of... Um, I've taken a little chunk out of the face of this nut. It's just cosmetic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put a bit of build up, a little bit of stuff on here, so I can um, fill it, fill it. Hopefully, um, yeah. So I want, I want. I think we're doomed if we don't do. What's the word? You know, um, collaborative politics, some sort of thing. Um, yeah, we can't we can't be oppositional. It's 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 definitely I don't think it's working for us at all as a species. And I just think if we carry on this way we're just gonna waste all of the all of our efforts are gonna be wasted in this non stop political confrontation that we seem to be in. Um you know, and it, it, I think I started thinking about that kind of stuff around the time of Brexit, thinking, you know, regardless of who wins, how can it be in any way, how can anyone win in a situation where 48% um, of people are deeply unhappy with an outcome and, you know, 52 run around throwing their hats in the air like it's a fantastic outcome so just just seems to me that's a loss if if when when one side wins you know 48 percent of people lose that's that's got to be got to be a loss all round how, how do you govern or how do you how do you make something work when you've got such a huge huge sizable minority uh just unhappy with the outcome so that's what I would think in the, in the same way you know we've got a uh, you know a labor victory at this election um, but it doesn't leave me feeling uh, positive about the electoral sorry the, the political process at all you know and I, I, I find it very depressing when I hear a lot of voters, potential voters who aren't voting, saying things like, um, you know, I, I just don't trust any of them, they're all this and they're all that, and giving that as their reason for not voting. It's just it's very disheartening. Um, but I can understand it because it feels like, feels like there's no way this system can produce anything productive. Um, just as it, the American system seems to be, you know, boiling 300 million people down to two very old men, one, you know, one, both both dubious for their own reasons, or both high, highly suspicious for their own reasons. Um, anyway, you know, and I, and I know some of you will, will be absolute Trump fans, and some of you will be Biden fans. But I'm, I hope that some of you will recognise my dis disappointment that the systems we have seems to leave so many people without um, without a kind of anything to be positive about. Um, you know, and I think the idea of uh, cooperative or collaborative um, 
politics. I, I don't think it might sound odd, and you know, maybe we've not seen it before, other than maybe in sort of governments of national emergency. But uh, you know, maybe maybe it's maybe we we still need to think about it. Like I said, I don't think we can have. I don't think we can have good results in a country where a huge, huge minority is left unhappy for whatever reason, i.e., you know, for the reason it didn't, it didn't win the election, and it's not feel it doesn't feel represented, or uh, you know, it was left, or it didn't win the argument in the um, in the case of the referendum, you know. And so it feels completely left out. Not good. Um, but we don't seem to know any much different from that. Uh, but, you know, the other kind of thing is, do we, you know, do we have enough time to find another way of doing things? I'm not sure we do, really. Okay, so there's my nut that fits better. Um, now what I can do is... Uh, put the strings on just to have a, a look at how far we are off the height. Oops, oh, ping. Um. Yeah, so so the question is, you know, for me when I looked at the facing voting, you know, I've got all of those things. I've got no natural home with any one party over any other. Um, I, I don't think this system of adversarial stuff can work much longer and. Pr it's, you know, I look at the that whole thing of, um, you know, the cycle of now you're the villain, now you're the monster, now you're back being the villain again, the saviour, the villain. That sort of endless loop of stuff uh, just has me feeling like there's not really a lot of confidence. I don't know if that's the right word, but not a lot of optimism about the uh, state of <laughs> politics. Um, Okay, so this, this is still high at the first fret, so I've got a bit of height to take down. But I just want to see how much I can take down, and I'll take some off the bottom and some off the top. You can take it all off the top, but if you go too far from the top, there is a risk of your slot wandering. So it's not the, it's a little bit of a, I don't know what you call it, a little bit of chipping on the front of this nut, but I'll remove it as we go down a bit lower. So in a sense, it's probably is better if I take it from the top of things. So while I'm here, how's that sitting? Yeah, that's good. Right, let's get these out. See where we are. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't suppose anyone's going to form a political system of that kind out of the blue. Um, I've, I think I've had enough of I've had quite a lot of a belly full of local politics in the not too recent past uh, myself. And I don't know if I could even bear major league politics, if you like. So, well, if local politics was as unpleasant as it was, has been, yeah, the idea of a uh, Doing more is uh, scurry. Okay, let's try and let's see if we can take this down a straight line. Actually, we're not doing that one yet. So why don't I get back to the one we're actually doing, which is this one. That's the second time I've done that recently. I've gone straight off at the wrong slot. Yeah, anyway, so that's 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 my confusion. But I, I voted and if I'm honest, I well I won't say who I voted for. I I voted in a kind of limited way in that I, I voted for the only party that frankly I could say the overall obvious concern of this party uh, reflects what I think is more important than a lot of the other things that are going on, since I recognise that I, I'm not going to find a party that kind of matches my 
sensibilities about stuff. Um, so what I'm going to do, just to get this down to the right height, I'm going to take a bit uh, of a time on this, and then I'm going to round out the um, the uh, surplus stuff and come back and do some more. <sighs> yeah. So it's uh, yeah, I think it's I think it really is time we had found some way of doing. Um, collaborative politics just uh, yeah the idea that you win and it, it really was stood out a mile in the in the, the brexit referendum in the uk you know the idea that whoever won that sort of wins completely the, the say on how everything goes you know and, and maybe there are, there are absolutely are times where you have to make that decision that way but but then they would be done with a kind of majority of you know a meaningful majority that you could really say not not that it's not you're not saying it has to be a certain majority to in order to have a safe decision because any any majority is you know providing your you know your systems of measuring are good then it's a clear majority but the, the, the question for me would be is what percentage of people can a society afford to ignore in such an important issue or you know call losers in such an important issue um, and I think you know 48% is far too dangerous to have feeling like they've lost in any country I mean how can you how can you go forward with any unity or sense of being able to go forward um, when you know nearly half of the people are not disenfranchised but left behind by that decision so I think and that's for me is the, the the big problem is the you know is that issue of what is the, if you were going to do things on a let's say a single issue referendum what um, what percentage would I want to a winning decision to have and then of course the question then comes up well what if that's all I was saying that but what if you your decision your what if what happens if you're outcomes are always in the 50-40 type of breakdown and then I guess the thing you have to say there is that something's going wrong in your society if things are if the society sees a single issue as polarized as that I think there's a real problem and I, I don't quite know how to describe that problem but it's a it's a it's like Somehow, you as a country, you've lost some sort of nuance or sophistication in in thinking about things, which is bit a bigger problem than than whatever you know the outcome you're going to get from this uh, or the issue being discussed in the particular referendum. So I think, you know, for me, come back in the circle, the fact that we are ending up with forty fifties, forty eight fifty twos is indicative of a, a real problem of either framing of the question or understanding of the issue um, I would think to have a to have such a huge possible difference of opinion um, you know and, and coming back to that thing is you know how, how can you harness the efforts goodwill inventiveness of people uh, if You know, forty-eight percent of them are feel left behind, or you know, not not considered. So it's a kind of a tricky thing for me. Anyway, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take off excess material off this nut. This is stuff we don't need. It's above the level of the strings, and obviously, if I'm careful, I can get it and roughly level with the strings without breaking them and um, you can see I'm going to take a bit more at the treble end here before I start cutting into the strings so it's quite a bit being cut off but it will make it look a lot tidier at the end and I'll get down hopefully to just below the level of that bit of um, chainsaw 
uh, rash. So what I can do is also press those down a little bit more and cut a little further backwards. Yeah, so I, you, you can probably tell, I think the kind of way we doing politics is had its day, I think. Um, but how the hell that will change, I certainly I can't imagine it changing in my lifetime. Uh, so, my jet criticism, back to that, is that upgrading this nut is not a simple proposition, sadly. Uh, and it requires this sort of work. Let's now move that to where I can actually see it a bit better. Yeah, yeah dis disagreement politics don't feel right to me. So look, we're at close to the, the right height for these, um, for all these strings. And also what we can do, and it's much easier at this point now to do this again, if I go across to the each string again, and we can do the sort of a little bit of cleaning out the slots now. So go right, let's just smooth that out. Get rid of any burr, smooth it out. Check the height. Fraction above 0.3, but it's not a bad sort of height from there. So what we're going to get is a nice rounded out slot. A tad higher than 0.3. Very close to the B. Yeah, so I voted uh, with the only the, the one that, if I had to say, on surface, on the surface, which of these parties speaks to a, a sensibility that is my natural one. Um, and I had to do that without any question about how realistic or what, what you know, was it a wasted vote and so on and so forth. Because um, for some people it would be a wasted vote. But I voted green. Um, and I don't mind telling you that because I'm not ashamed of it. I voted it because actually I do think genuinely above all the other kind of obsessions with growth, with you know all the different things I actually think our relationship with the planet and it's and the fact that we've lost track of it and let it go so badly wrong uh, is actually fundamental to everything and uh, uh, absolute loads of the other things would be set on the right path if we were taking the uh, our relationship with the planet on a more wholesome footing so that's why and, you know, any day of the week I can say to you, you know, my relationship with the world I walk around in, the trees, the plants, is my primary concern every time. You know, it doesn't answer questions like, well, how do you make food and who pays for the trains? And, you know, none of that's answered. But I would, I would like... I would like a cooperative, uh, you know, what's the word, you know, a, a, a politics of people working together, collaborative politics based on green importance of our, our relationship with the planet. That would be my start point. Anyway, so there's my, there's my, uh, there's my nut in place and it's not stuck down um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some tiny tweaks to the action 
um, in a minute, for a minute. So you still probably can't see very well at the moment. Um, bear with me. Okay, 1.5. Five millimeter radius, so it's nice and it's quite easy to bend strings on. Okay, I'm just going to do these others by eye for a second, try and get them lined up as much as possible. And uh, Come on, come on, down you go. Yeah, so cooperative politics, that's what I want. I mean, the idea that you, you, you win and this is what really upset me about the, the Brexit thing, actually. The idea, it was built around this idea, and so, so, is, so is politics generally, but it, it's built around this idea that you win and the people you beat basically can go to hell. That's really what it's saying. Which I just think is what an awful, awful thing. As a politician, how could I be happy just, you know, blowing out for the 40% that didn't vote, for, you know, 48% that don't agree with me or whatever it is. I mean, I just think that's insane. How, can you, how, could, how could you be happy being a politician in that world? Okay, got the right action, got the right thing, and the neck is practically flat. So I'm going to give it a tweak, a slight um, loosening tweak, very small one. Um, if I can get this thing in and out. Um, now it's probably... Uh, I love it when your hex key doesn't come out. Just a tiny bit to give it a tiny bit more than none relief and that's where it is at right that's uh, action set relief set nut set although I've got a bit more filing to do when it's off so what I'm going to do now is I'm just one more time I'm going to roll these off to the side and I'm going to mark up the frets now just off to the side there, please. Thank you. Just a little bit. Um, yes, so that's anyway, that's where I voted green because I think our relationship with the uh, planet is critical. And uh, I have to say, you know, I couldn't find a start point with the other parties that said, you know, what is it about either of the others that so, you know, fundamentally represents what I care about that I would start with them uh, you know if I'm honest what do I know about conservatives uh, as far as I can understand the conservatives uh, stand supposedly stand for conserving things God alone knows what that actually means but that's what I'm told it means um, labor as I understood it used to be about uh, representing the, the working man uh, and I guess um, not not much representing the idle rich by def by definition 
Um, oh, I don't know, it's not, did he ever say that? But certainly supposed to represent the working man. Um, but, you know, do I think that we have to see, do I think we have to see labor as in constant labor, as in working individuals, as in constant, does it have to be that they're in constant conflict with the capitalist who employ them? No, no more than politics has to be adversarial and contested. Um, nothing's written, you know, we don't have to make it so that we are at odds. You know, I guess in a world where, oh jeez, look at that, I'm shooting this nut all over the place. In a, you know, in a world where if, you, if it's the norm and you set it up that the owners of uh, the means of production you know, are, exist to make profits at the expense of the worker, then of course it's going to be, uh, of course it's going to be at conflict the whole time. But um, is that really, really, really the only model of human productive interaction? Because if it is, it's the model that's got us to this point in history where we're at we're not only at odds with each other and the planet, but we're also, you know, the, the world is riddled with a kind of a capital acquisition of capital based inequality, which is going to come down on our heads if it isn't already. Okay, so finally, after all of that messing about, thank you, uh, Jet, Jet of the, sorry, you couldn't see any of that. Thank you, Jet of the stupidly wide nut uh, decisions. So now we're going to do some fret leveling. Hurrah, we're back into, back on course. Um, uh, as you know, I've got a bit more tidying and polishing and gentle filing of the nut to do before we glue it down and call it quits but mostly it is in good shape and it's doing the job it's as thick thick it's the right thickness for the slot and yeah it's going to work huh. but that's a, a that's a pain when you you can't use an existing or a tusk uh, off the shelf nut for a swap out on a guitar like this so Jet, it would be much appreciated if you made the made the uh, nut the same as a fender, because this these tusk nuts are good fender drop-ins. There's no doubt about it. So I don't see why Jet couldn't make that little adjustment, you know. And the same with uh, same Jet with the um, ends of the frets. It could do with that little bit of extra rounding off there. But I'll do that. So just a, I'm going to quick look and feel at what we've got here in terms of the frets. And so far, it's actually looking fairly impressive. There's my first levelings, and I can see mild hills and valleys. But um, actually, it's not bad at all. It's generally speaking very good. Um, the sort of diagnostic thing, saying okay just about cutting, cutting, cutting more, little high spot, cutting, 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 good, hardly, none at all. There's a low spot there on nine, um, low spot on the edge on 10, barely cutting on 11, so nine to 11 a bit low, 12 okay, 13 a bit higher, 14 okay, 15 cutting, hardly, cutting a bit, cutting a bit, a bit more. Generally speaking, 9 to 11 is the only place. There's a bit of a high spot at 3 and 4. 9 to 11 is the, uh, the low spot. So actually that's less um, all round than many guitars. So good start, uh, jet, you know, in 
encouraging start, I would say. So obviously, when I do a, a level like so, first thing I want to do afterwards is play each individual note. Now we, I'm going to take off this, going to take off this um, plastic here because it is already getting in the way of the strings. So we don't want that happening when we try to evaluate. Good. That's all I'm going to do with the E track. Now we're going to go straight to the B track. It's paying me back um, what it took away in nut faff. It's giving me back in, hopefully, fret leveling. Now normally when you do the next track, like the B track after the E track, you tend to find that the pattern uh, continues in that if you find that the, what do we say, 9, 10, 11 is, are in a slight dip on the fingerboard, then we kind of expect that to replicate across. Um, in fact, it's, it's not so bad, actually. It's, it's leveling out, so it could be that they were just low at the edges due to pressing, which would be quite impressive. It might be because usually the, the highs and lows we pick up at this point is, is comes down to the, um, the, the curving of the neck rather than the seating of the frets. Very good. Hmm. Okay. Good. Good. So good small details annoying details with the nut I've got to say but nonetheless technically small if you know what you're doing oh actually right let's go we've got a we've got a, we've got a problem with the jack which forces us to change it then we've got a problem in the jack tunnel is not built for quality jack sockets so then we've got a problem with trying to get it to fit in and then we have to use different holes because the jack won't actually go in at all with a quality jack fitted. So that's a bit of a pain. And as you heard at the beginning, that would have been a bit of a showstopper for a customer who didn't have experience to do it themselves. So that could have been this nice, otherwise lovely guitar heading back to the, the, the showroom, you know, back to the retailer. Um, you know, because you, you can't necessarily expect everybody's teenage son, daughter to know how to put that right, nor should they have to. So, Generally speaking, a couple of annoying things that just are far more trouble than they should be. Okay, good. So what I'm feeling about this is that the neck itself is uh, under compression it's staying straight. There aren't significant hills and valleys in it, which I think is quite unusual. And it could be unusual because of its uh, roasted nature. I don't know enough about really. I mean, maybe maybe there's something about the extra dryness of the, the roasted torrified or whatever they call it. I don't know if it's exactly the same thing, but you know, it could be that something in that process uh, does something to the grain of the wood or something and prevents it from having these differences in flexibility which uh, are very common in regular maple unroasted maple so uh, I guess I would find out over time by doing more maple roasted maple necks that would be the simple way um, but that's certainly what I'm finding here tiniest bit of something at 12 but that's really surprisingly good um, don't forget I've lowered the action as well so um, you know I'm, I'm pushing it as hard as possible which is what I like to do um, anyway well, it's been a for me it's been a great week in that I've had 
two more people join up to the what I've called tongue-in-cheekly the golden banana pack and the golden banana pack is it's a pack literally a kit containing um, a prepared u-channel truss rod and the little bits and pieces and sandpaper that you need to start using this method to level your frets along with uh, copies of my two ebooks first one being the full setup guide five steps to guitar setup heaven it's included in the price of this pack and also the pack uh, confers upon the purchaser membership of the uh, golden banana pack think about the las vegas um, hollywood no las vegas rat pack las vegas where did, where did they always used to put it was las vegas wasn't it you know sinatra and the rat pack anyway so the to the um golden banana pack is you are if you buy the pack you are also a member of the pack founding member in fact we're on number six already and part of uh, what we'll get is what you'll get is um access to live zoom uh, technique question and answer experience sharing things about specifically about precision fret leveling using this method where the neck is under load and the uh, and the neck relieved and using this kind of tool so and that'll be I think I'm going to do it once a month 40 minutes or actually it could be longer it could be twice 40 minutes just limited by dialing back in since zoom gives you 40 minutes free um, and, a, and a paid membership on zoom is a bit prohibitive um, at the moment but depending on how many how many groups of 10 people so there's a bit of a low spot here on the other side so we've got something notice that in the middle it wasn't low but at the edges so for some reason 9 10 11 both sides were a bit lower and i don't know if those were hammered in or pressed in differently or something um, but forget the tuning that's playing perfectly the way I want there's almost no fret slap and um, yeah I'm very happy with that so now what I'm going to do is we're going to remove these strings and we're going to concentrate on the uh, tweaking the nut Actually, I won't com remove them completely what I'm going to do is take them slack them off while I just do a bit more filing of the nut with the strings out of the way just want to get it down just a little bit lower um, and then smooth it out but just be able to put the strings back on as and when <laughs> that's always going to happen Sam until you put this string safely out of the way and the same with this one put this one safely out of the way uh, yes so yes so the uh, golden banana pack I'm selling um, with all the, the parts required to um, make, make the uh, to do your own leveling with this technique and uh, so like I say we're up to 10 now and um, sorry six six um, and I'm gonna sort of grow it in groups of 10 packs of 10 uh, and see you know if I'm lucky and more people want to be involved in it and then we'll go from there and see um, and currently of, of the six who've joined up so far two are North America based and the rest are UK based so we're going to have some different time zones as well as uh, uh, UK time zones so it'd be nice to see how we can work the times on that so that everyone can all the people can all take part in it um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, just put the string back in for a second. Where is the G? Come on, G. Out from under there. Right, G, B. I should probably have put my my um. automatic windery thing on because that would have saved quite a bit of time 
for winding these on. Okay, so that just tells me where the front and back of the thing is. There's actually quite a bit more, quite a bit more I can remove from here. Yeah, so Golden Banana Pack membership is 80 quid plus uh, postage to wherever your location is. I have to say in the in the US, uh, that's still, or it tends to, US, Canada tends to be about 35 quid courier postage. Um, uh, but the customers who've bought from there so far um, have been, I think, happy to do it at that cost um, so it's nice to get some international customers <sighs> so like I said we're on to the six founder members of the first pack and actually I kind of call them the founder members of the whole thing since they are the first six to have committed um, I'm looking forward to getting my first uh, sessions lined up you know and of course I don't know how that will work exactly um, you know, but I've, I've used zoom for up to 10 people 12 people something like that in the past and my experience of it is that it does and you know, if you're careful and not everyone shouting at once it can be it can it can actually be a very effective method to share ideas and experiences and talk to people with um, and it's surprisingly good you, you might not expect it to be that good but in my experience it does well um, I did you know think about the sort of patreon videos and I've got some ideas for other content that would be exclusive and separate um, for patreon different levels of patreon which I've never got into yet um, but I'm thinking of doing that as well but the first step will be making the golden banana pack work out do what I want it to do and um, yeah so if you're interested in that and the the, the trust rod the U channel trust rod that forms the banana in the pack bizarrely happens to be a US sourced one um, and the reason is you can get them in Europe, but they they have some of the, well, the way they make them, I don't know where they source them from, Hosco possibly, I don't know. But the European ones have, well, put it simply, they require some modification, which is okay, I can do it, but it's it requires sanding down the drum, the adjuster drum barrel at the end and so on and so forth. And it takes a little while. And then you, they all come they all take some working on because they, the way they make them, they never start flat. I'm not quite sure what the decision was in that, but they, they're always at rest. They're always slightly curved, and we, I prefer them to be flat. Um, this kind of makes more sense. Well, they, they work either way, but I prefer them to be flat. So we start with them flat. Um, so I have to sometimes bend them a little bit, but also then sand them so they're, they're dead flat at rest. Okay, so I'm just looking at this and I'm thinking I probably, before I do the recrowning on this nice new board, I think what I prefer to do is I prefer to tape it up first. Not often I do it that way around, but I'm going to, I'm going to be sort of wiping it down a bit and stuff. So what I'm, I think I'm going to do is I'll tape off a bit first and, and then just show you quickly how I'm crowning Oh, and I'll also I'll do more than crown, I'll do the fret ends as well. But I'll just show you those, and then I'll go off camera, recharge a few bits and pieces, and then I'll come back on when I've done it, um, just because it's not hugely interesting. It's the same as every other setup, pretty much from this point. Um, so you know, here's the first two I'm going to, or well, the first one I'm going to work on. So what I'll do in both, with I'll get my little files. So we've got we've got files for. The frets on their own, we've got a, a crowning file 
So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to paint all of the tops of the frets again with marker pen and then we start by uh, start by um, using the offset crowning file. And actually no, what we'll do first is we'll use this convex file here, concave sorry, and we'll just round off the ends of these frets and that's that's what's missing from before and obviously I'll do them all together in one line but I'm just going to do this opposite side up here so I'm just literally rounding them off and while I'm on this side I will get the other little file and just come into the edges to make sure that any little burr is snicked off nicely and then we come back and do it on this bit here so it's two different files just to round off these frets so they don't have that funny uncut edge thing going on and then once I've done that I will I will um, use my medium surface on this one and I will just gently recrown the frets that are, that wherever they've been leveled and it isn't that much of it so it won't take that much work but that's what I'll do and I'll just repeat it all the way up the board and then we'll come back when that's all cleaned off and the frets are polished out which is again a bit boring and I can watch something on the video so see you shortly it's getting dark because we're past the mid point of the year it's July the 5th or something anyway frets all done polished out nut glued in place um, we've got some things to change here now we've got some tuners to remove and replace so let us remove the sorry about the view not so great let's take them out the replacements are right angled as well um, which is good so that should be a, a simple swap then we're going to restring put on the put on the fresh new string tree or trees I've got a feeling it might be smart to put two string trees on even though the original doesn't have two but let's have a look we'll have a, a look at the angle um, I don't personally think that there's anything wrong with these um, but Trevor's choice in this mad R is to have the locking tuners so that's fine but I you know I doubt there will be anything unusually not great about these um, so yeah overall verdict on this I will give as um, a couple of problems fret ends loose jack and a non not easy to upgrade nut it wouldn't be so bad if you went for a Chinese bone nut because they're probably oversized to begin with so you, you know it's not a big problem but as it stands the going for a tusk going for a tusk you're stuck um, anyway hence I mean I find that I find that a, a real pain and there are there aren't that many guitars that catch me out that way um, you know it's not the end of the world but just you know, suddenly you buy a strat nut and you think okay that will be a straightforward should be a straightforward swap out and then you suddenly find you're in trouble because you're gonna have to make one or cancel the whole plan anyway so here we are with the these events and um, just um, fans and blocking tuners and they are also at 90 90 no 45 degrees uh, position for the screws so it should be a, a pretty straightforward swap out um, I'm going to hold I'm going to replace the first string tree and then I'll hold off the second one until we got all the strings on um, but with the view that it might get second one um, and everything else is good apart from we just set up the tremolo to a fixed range of down uh, 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 what do you call it a fixed range of thingy now I'm just wondering did I check 
Trevor about that. Uh, well, I can check at home and adjust it. I'm not sending tomorrow first thing. I'm sending on Tuesday this one. So I've got a day to find out. And if necessary, I'll just reset it to down only at home. It's probably better than sending messages at 9 o'clock, which it is right now. Um, yeah, so, hmm, good. I, w I will say as a plus for this guitar, the frets are surprisingly good, but let down by the, uh, the fret ends in this case. Um, I think it's probably a f sort of factory uh, process decision, so I think it would probably be the same on most, if not all of them. Um, but anyway, we shall... We shall see on another one, if I'm lucky enough to see another one. Never know with this thing. It's on one, and I want it to bite. Is that biting enough? Hard to tell with this. That's why the, the hand-cranked screwdriver is slower, but gives you more feedback on this one. So I don't think there's that much more grip in that. That isn't. Um, it could be this is a slightly smaller screw for starters, so let's get this out. Now, let's just compare it to the ones we took out. Yeah. They look to be the same, so I have a feeling these might have been these holes might have been overdrilled from the start, which is not brilliant. If that's the case. I mean, we might want to have to. I'm using the original screws again now. We might have to uh, re-fill the hole a little bit. Actually, that's okay. That's just fine. So we'll leave those screws alone and use the originals a little bit fractionally fatter okay um yeah so not good for it, good for it ends be prepared to file them and sand them out if you're you know particularly if you're doing some fret work anyway um uh some people i'm sure if you've got this guitar new you could probably live with it you know if you didn't know any different you probably wouldn't find it offensive um, it just feels odd to me, and you could kind of visually see why. You know, that there's not a lot of fret jobs I've seen where the ends are as sharp cut as that. You know, it, it, it's practi practically a blade edge, you know, where the fret slices off like that. And um, anyway, so we've softened those off. And, you know, the problem with the jack, that's a, a, a right disappointing thing. Um, and you know, just the un, un the difficulty in upgrading the nut. Uh, you know, they might be have to sort of uh, the take on this might be. Well, you know, you shouldn't need to have to sort of thing. Um, you know, it's a, it's a perfectly good, uh, perfectly good. Um, bone nut, why would you change it? And uh, you know, there's some truth in that, it's not necessary to change it, but you know, it's a, it's a shame that it's kind of designed without that adjustability built in. Right, so straight away we'll get this one out of there, put that one in the spares department, we'll get a little um, a slightly bigger hole and that isn't it. This is not a very good drill bit but it will do. It's an old HSS one but doesn't look like a wood one. So I'm just opening up the size of the top of the hole to allow it to take take the uh, string tree, tusk string tree, um, and that way we've got ourselves a, 
and that we're not going to run any risk of splitting the wood. Um, so what I'm going to do now is tighten up the uh, tuners with my box spanner. And then next step is we'll load up strings. Uh, we'll set the intonation and then tweak the... Actually, we'll set the tremolo first and then set the intonation. Okay, Ta -da. Okay. so long view, not very exciting long view, but we'll load up strings. <laughs> yes, so a funny week. I don't know if, I don't know who expects, if anyone expects the, uh, anything to kind of meaningfully quickly change with a, a, a new government. I think I think partly it's been so long since anyone s experienced a change of government. Um, you know, 14 years is a, a long chunk of lifespan. It's easy to, really is easy to forget <laughs> what happened the last time or whether we felt it or noticed it. Um, I mean, I, I do remember all that sort of red wall stuff and uh, how they'd all come across to to um they'd all come across to conservatives i think wasn't it because they were they were insisting they came across to ensure that brexit got done or something that was uh, they didn't trust how strange there's one big hole and some small hole there one of the holes on the back of this block the strings is bigger than the others how odd. Anyway. Um, yes, so, so yeah, it's been a long time since we changed over governments. Um, it will be interesting to see what, if anything, is noticeably different soon. I mean, I think the, the first thing in the UK that anyone probably noticed is the wake up and hear that the, the Rwanda uh, migrant deportation destination has been kind of d done, disappeared with, you know, so the, 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 the average member of the public is watching hundreds of millions of pounds of taxpayers money being kind of written off in a plan that just never could, was never going to go anywhere. And uh, lo and behold, didn't go anywhere. And now it's just been cancelled. <sighs> and Rwanda, a bunch of people in Rwanda made a load of foreign currency or whatever. Um, <laughs> and that was that. Okay, so um, Trevor, just a, a note here about locking tuners. Um, if you ever detect that I don't seem to be a fan of them. Um, the reason is only that I don't like, I don't think they're necessary, first of all, so they won't, they won't give you any better tuning stability than getting your nut and stretching your strings thoroughly won't give you, okay? So, um, but what you'll notice is I pushed it all the way through until it was taut, pulled it back a centimeter and then locked it off. And that seems an odd thing to do for some people who, who say, well, why did I, you know, I've bought locking tuners, I don't want to wrap anything on there. Um, and my response to that is, if you don't, if you pull it all the way tight through and lock it there now, next time you want to come and slack it off, you'll, you'll uh, pull the, you'll slack the string off, the crimped bit will come through there, and when you come to put it back on, it will go back to the same place, and the second time you crimp it, you'll probably break it because it's da it's crimping on damaged uh, wire and it does da it, they do break much quicker so what i've discovered is that if you want to use locking tuners add that extra centimeter um, not only does it give the 
takes the load off the crimping um, and, and allows the post to hold a little bit of that load. So centimetre lock, not so tight crimped because you've got a bit of locking. Um, but it also means that if you had to slack everything off, um, you've got, you can do that and then you can thread the th string back through again and this time um, basically push the crimped bit further through so that that's out of the way and you're crimping on a fresh bit. Essentially, you're crimping on a bit of the extra centimetre that you gave yourself. That, I've found that to come in handy so many times and, you know, that's my kind of basic rule of thumb now. And had you, if you had to slack these strings off for any reason, um, then you'd be grateful that I told you this because you would probably find that the strings I'd put on there um, would, you know, as soon as you slack them off, they would try to retighten them, they would snap. So having this extra centimetre wound on is definitely good in my book. Um, and like I said, it really, it's a, it's a complete myth that your locking tuners are going to assist you with tuning stability. And funnily enough, those people who spend money on locking tuners, especially to fix uh, a tuning stability problem, they're always convinced that it's done that. Um, and I think partly it's a psychological thing because, you know, we spent money on something. I'm sure we are going to convince ourselves that that's made the, the all-important difference. But it doesn't. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just turn it round that post once. There you go. And we just get it on, give it a little pull to stretch it and seat it into place. Same thing there, a little bit of a pull. So tuning stability comes from getting your nut exactly right and that means uh, having a good quality material, tusk is great for that, very little friction, having the right uh, width slots so there's no friction and um, grabbing of the strings and then also having the right first fret action which is you know how you cut your down to how you how deep you cut your nut slots or you know how you seat the nut you want to get aim for the I aim for a 0.3 millimeter first fret action if you get the all the aspects of the nut right um, I encourage you to think of that as 50% of your tuning stability the other 50% is string slack that's unreleased and what we're going to see in a bit is I'm starting the process now gently slacking that slacking stretching that slack out of the strings um, I'm just doing a sort of a broad pull at that point but once we tighten it up we'll stretch it in a different way Okay. Let's see where we've gone. I have a feeling. Wow. That's amazing. How has that changed so much? That is amazing. What's gone on there? Is this. That's back there. Alright. Now this is. This is quite perplexing. Something. F is this tightened up? Oh, don't know. Oh, don't know. Oh, don't know. Oh, don't know. I don't know what that is all about. Right. So this action has changed it, in the time that I've done the leveling. So uh, I'm going to have to reset it and just double check. That's very odd. Now it can change because when you don't have strings on there, 
it's very easy for the little grub screws to rattle or just shake as you move the guitar around doing work on it. And so that happens is that it can easily reset its its action. Um, I didn't wouldn't have thought it would have done it that much. Um, that's high E of a set of tens. So I've got a spare string there for future reference. I often don't mark them up because it it's, it's fiddly and time consuming. Okay, so now I've got to go back and reset the action. If you can just uh, bear with me a minute. That's weird. Right. Oh wow. What kind of moved? This is still flat down, isn't it? Yep. So how about that? That is very weird. Right, I'm just going to do this in a zippy, quick way. Weirdness. Weirdness. Come on. I'm sure this that much didn't move. Weird. I'm I'm completely puzzled. I for the life of me I now cannot think what has happened there. Change that. I don't think the central posts on the thing kind of moved. I'll just get it to vaguely to pitch a minute. Let's have a look. 1 1.25, 1.25, 1.25, yes. Slightly up needed on the D. Slightly up on the A. D. Okay, well, I not, may not be able to explain this. Right, well... Don't ask me why. Let's check one thing. Check one thing. That's fine still. No. Nope. Okay, so next part of the stretching process is grab and stretch between thumb and forefinger. And it takes quite a bit of strength to do. Um, but you need to do it two or three times so we get right the way get all of the slack out of it and uh, the thing is is the slack in these strings you have to do both of these parts together if you do the slack but not the nut slots and the get the right material and the correct first for action if you don't pay attention to the nut you can get all of the slack out of your strings and it still won't stay in tune because of the nut component if you do the nut but don't stretch out the slack Uh, it'll go out of tune for years. See that? That's all stored in the string and it'll come out on its own 
little tiny bit. More and more obviously in the coiled spring and the um, wound strings. So we go back and we do it again until it all, well, until it stops detuning basically. And once it stops detuning, we're ready to play. And of course, people blame the tremolo as for putting guitars out of tune or for detuning guitars. And it's a bit unfair because the tremolo doesn't really put the guitar out of tune. The, it's the nut and the, the string, the nut condition and the string slack is what puts the guitar out of tune. The tremolo will just help that. It'll, it'll cause it to, you know, it'll cause that instability to put the guitar out of tune. So, if you want the tremolo to play um, effectively on a strat, all you have to do is take care of 50% of the tuning equation that is your nut, and the 50% that is your string slack. Okay, and we do some more, and like I say, we kind of do it until everything stops detuning. And you might say, well, but you're never going to play your guitar like this, this fiercely. Well, in a way you do every time you bend it, so I wouldn't, wouldn't go, take, go down that sort of line of thought, really, because this, this stored slack will kind of leach out, as I call it, over time, Every time you do a little bend, it'll a little bit out of tune, and even the tiniest bit out of tune, as you know, will will sound bad. And it doesn't take hardly a fraction of a, a note out of tune to sound out of tune, if you get what I mean. So three times we've done that now. Very close now. Okay, that's pretty close. Um, I'm just going to check one more thing before we move on. I'm going to check the, oh, I don't know what we're looking at here, terrible camera work, I blame the cameraman. Um, we'll just check this first fret action again and we're, we're probably about 4.4, actually fractionally over that. So I'm going to come down a tiny bit on these, just a tiny bit, we're a bit, a bit over and we're, 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 we're where we need to be. G seventeen. Now I have a different tool which sometimes I use and it seems to I, I get on better when I use this as the what I call the earth mover, which gets me to where I want to be in terms of the height. And then the other file as a rounding out device. This this has a very positive cut and very dependable rate. Um, um, so I kind of used to use the two in conjunction with each other. There we go. And then 
it's pretty much all there any, anyway, but then I sort of round out with this file. Sometimes is all it takes. So yeah, we'll see if we see if we can tell anything about this new <laughs> labour wonderland that we're living in. Um, I'm not so sure. Was it that good in the Blair times? I don't know. It seemed some people that seemed to represent a, a good time. I find it hard to really evaluate or judge clearly one against the other. Um, you know, was was this last 14 years better or worse than the Tony Blair era? I don't know. I don't know. Um, what positive have has the ruling party done in in this last period of time? What achievements would I put my hand on my heart or my finger on and go? Oh yes, the signal achievement of the Tory government of uh, whenever it was to whenever it was um, and the only thing I've heard you know this cracks me up the only thing I've heard so far is people say Brexit and I go okay um, in what way has that been a fabulous improvement I'm not sure at all some people go, Brexit. That's their answer. Um, don't know. I really don't know. Uh, what else has happened good? Well, we, we experienced a pandemic, didn't we? And there was some sort of government handling of that, wasn't there? Mm -hmm. which could still turn out to be somewhat problematic over the years to come. Um, apart from, so Brexit, the pandemic, uh, anything else, anyone? these holding off a bit yeah so I mean uh, not HS2 no that's not definitely not good known in the record books has it um, anything else to remember no don't know so who knows not me with that um, let's just now let's just now set let's now set some let's use the Fridua method of setting uh, can I do it with, oh, I can't do it with this one holy moly there isn't enough downhill adjustment left on the low E that's it it's, it's, it's another one okay my dear friend whatever you're called jet now we're f we're on the ground. Let's just see. Let's just try something. We're on the we're on the deck, so I haven't got any. Normally, I want a five millimeter adjustment on this thing. What happens to the action? Seriously, when I go up to there, are we still within a playable range? See, we're up above 0.5. So if I'm going to set this thing floating, I'm going to need to shim this neck to give myself a bit more downward range room. 
Well, it's currently set to down only, that's the point. I'm going to leave it there as the default. And what we'll do is we're going to take it back, check with Trevor, and if it needs setting floating, then we'll shim. But we're not going to shim if it doesn't need to. The reason why I'd have to shim is to run it floating. Floating mode, fully floating mode, lifts the action up by about half a mil. Um, and that's... And that means I have to start by setting it low by half a mil. So what I do is set all of these down by half a millimeter and then do the floating and then they'd be back up at my target height. But I can't do that because it's already set rounded out for the, for the action I wanted. So what it means is there's no further scope in this configuration in the geometry here for a lower action. Um, I'm at the lowest action you can get on that low E for example. Well uh, potentially I could might be able to dial, oh god sorry, I might be able to dial in the um, further into those uh, what do you call it there. Um, that's a good point. Maybe I maybe I could see whether I can do that. Um, but I'm still going to end up backwards and forwards adjustment. Let me think a second. That's in fact, I'm not even sure that's perfectly even anyway. Um, most people most people don't really want it in fully floating mode. So I'm going to hold off that. Like I said, I will either shim it or try and find a bit more reduction on the saddle post, uh, bridge post here if Trevor wants that, um, wants it done that way. So I'll leave that as a do it afterwards. Now the thing I wanted to double check here was the, before I do the final bit, which will be checking the intonation, let's just check the, um, you, you can't really see it from here, but if we were, look, sorry, my bits are falling off. If we were looking across the G, uh, very bad view looking as uh, a G goes over the uh, nut there we need a bit of angle and so I'm gonna have to do a bit of sort of close-up looking on this and see what the angle says it's doing here if I can if I can get anywhere close to balancing this on it it's not not the easiest thing in the world to do to balance a blade up on a string has an angle of about, blimey, three degrees, two degrees, three, it's enough. Okay, I'll leave it there as, as enough. That will, that will, that will offset. So the price difference on that tusk nut will cover the cost of the replacement jack. There we go. That's that. Now let me get a s -s socket, no a lead, and then we'll just do the tuner thing. And then we'll be done. So for intonation, the intonation is a physical distance issue. So each string has to have its own unique length, playing length, for uh, that neck that it's fitted on. So what I'm going to do is we, we can't really measure the changes. The changes are so tiny we couldn't we couldn't um, arrive at them by trying to measure them physically. We do it by sound or f frequency. So we tune the harmonic ping to E. And then fret it at the twelfth. So harmonic at the twelfth, and then fret it. Close. Pretty good. Pretty good. Well, that's good. That's a plus. Yeah. So it's not that hard to do. 
In other words, the jet people have made it their business to set the intonation at the factory. It's only ever going to be in one place. The only slight variations that we can have on where it will end up is different hand strengths when people fret at the 12th. But for the average hand strength fretting, which you try and do when you're intonating, but you can't be certain you're doing, but for the so-so average hand strength, um, they've got it exactly in the right place, which is perfect. And that just means somebody's sat there before it's gone out of the uh, out of the way, you know, out the door with a tuner and given it 10 seconds to go through it. So that's brilliant. That's a plus. Not everybody does that. Um, some people, just as long as the bridge is on there, they know it's somewhere within the vaguely within the acceptable range. <sighs> Job done. Out the door. So, overall, more positives than negatives, I would say, on this. Beautiful looking, great looking neck. Um, actually, a very good, very good un unbunched neck under load that's one of the better necks I've come across recently and I wonder if it's to do with the uh, what do you call it the torrified you know the, the, the roastedness um, and because uh, not everybody levels frets the way I do and probably wouldn't end up making the same sort of comments as I do about the um, particularly about the way that the neck has you know, particular ups and downs because my method can show you I can plot the ups and downs the, the unevenness in a neck where I can see where the compression is bunching it um, but so because I can see that it allows me to um, see when a situation comes along and it isn't doing that which is in the case of this one uh, isn't doing it so it's a pretty spectacularly unusual occurrence um, worthy of note and certainly I'll be keeping an eye on it, eye out for the next um, guitar that has a, a roasted neck to see whether it's got the same kind of accuracy or, or uh, yeah, same kind of straightness in the neck, which is brilliant. If it's to do with, I mean, it's good, good on new jet, um, but it would be, wouldn't it be fantastic if it turned out to be one of the characteristics of roasted maple? So that, on that basis, I think I need to get me another one with the roasted maple neck, maybe from somewhere else. Um, but maybe one of these, <laughs> twist my arm. Okay, thanks for watching. I hope that uh, was useful and I will see you soon, further, deeper into the Labour government.